Hello viewers welcome to my youtube channel myself professor shahana shengupta presently i am associated with swami vivekananda institute of modern science kolkata as an assistant professor in the department of microbiology in my youtube channel i generally share different types of academic videos related to the field of biological sciences today i will be discussing about antibody diversity this is the continuations of my previous lectures so let's start with our new topic happy listening let's begin with antibody diversity antibodies are antigen binding proteins present on the b cell membrane and secreted by plasma b cell immune system has unlimited capacity of producing different antibodies which recognize and bind to millions of potential antigen all antibodies share structural features even though they are diverse according to the antigen that caused the generation of the particular antibody in human immune system is capable of producing a vast number of different antibody molecules each with its own antigenic specificity virtually all microbes can trigger an antibody response successful recognition and eradication of many different types of microbes requires diversity among antibodies a result of variation in amino acid composition that allows them to interact with many different antigens let's focus on idiotypic determinants each antibody has only one type of heavy chain and one type of light chain the structural differences in the constant region of a heavy chain or light chain determines immunoglobulin classes subclasses types and subtypes within a species these constant region determinants are called as isotypic determinants or isotypes all members of a species carry the same constant regions so when an antibody from one species is injected into another species the isotypic determinants will be recognized as foreign antigen and forming an anti isotype antibody antibody diversity is really a very amazing property of antibodies there are around 40000 genes in our genome these genes code for all kind of proteins in our system like enzymes regulatory proteins immunoglobulins etc there are only a few gene in our genome that can code for immunoglobulin or ig but our immune system apparently can produce antibody in the order of 10 to the power 10 how does this become possible yes really this is a very relevant question according to one gene one protein concept our genetic system should contain millions of genes to produce millions of type of antibodies which is not possible practically in one word i can give answer to that question yes genetic diversity it is the basis of all this type of diversity that we can see in antibody structure there are many theories which actually try to establish the principle behind diversity of the antibody molecule let's begin with germline theories the germline theories maintain that the genome contributed by the germ cells like egg sperm contains a large repertory of immunoglobulin genes thus this theory evoked no special genetic mechanism to account for antibody diversity proponents argued that the immense survival value of the immune system justified the dedication of a significant fraction of the genome to the coding of antibodies 
According to the germline theory, each antibody producing cell has genes coding for all possible antibody specificities but expresses only the one stimulated by antigen. Now let's talk about somatic variation theory. The somatic variation theories maintain that the genome contains a relatively small number of immunoglobulin genes from which a large number of antibody specificities are generated in the somatic cell by mutation or recombination. The somatic mutation theory which holds that antibody producing cells contain only a few genes which produce antibody diversity simple by the mutation. Let's discuss about two gene model hypothesis. Two gene model hypothesis was proposed by Dreyer and Bennett in the year of 1965. According to this theory, two separate gene encode single immunoglobulin chain, either the heavy or the light one. One gene codes for variable region and another for constant region. These two genes must somehow come together at the DNA level to form a continuous message that can be transcribed into a single immunoglobulin gene. They also proposed like 100 to 1000 variable region genes present in the germline. Only single copies of C region class and subclass genes exist. The hypothesis given theoretical as well as intellectual understanding. The renowned Japanese immunologist Susumu Tonegawa was awarded in 1987 with Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his discovery of the genetic principle for generation of antibody diversity by comparing the chromosomes of adult and embryonic mice. Tonegawa found that the antibodies were formed from a random combination of antibody genes. From relatively few genes, billions of combinations would be produced and explain how this diversity is created. To understand the diversification mechanism in antibody generation, we need to know the genetics in immunology. The light and the heavy chains are encoded by separate multi-gene families. Those are situated on different chromosomes. In germline DNA, each of these multigen families contain several coding sequences which are called as gene segments and they are separated from each other by non-coding regions. During B cell maturation, these gene segments are rearranged and brought together to form functional immunoglobulin genes. Focus on the diversity of the light chain. Genetic region of each complete light chain consists of variable and constant region. Variable region is encoded by V and J gene sequences, whereas the constant region is represented by C gene. Presence of 150 V gene sequences separated from leader sequence by short intervening sequence. V gene specifies maximum part of the variable region. Rest part of the variable region encoded by J gene. It is a short repetitive sequence which repeated several times with significant variation. It is separated from the uh, V segments with a non-coding part of DNA. Generally, five J sequence exist at a time together. J sequence again separated from the C sequence by a small intervening sequence. Let's focus on the diversity of the heavy chain. Same kind of genetic diversity like like chain also can be seen in case of the heavy chain. But potentiality is relatively greater. Additional diversity that can be seen in case of the heavy chain is due to the presence of B gene. B gene is responsible for diversity especially in the hypervariable region. In case of heavy chain diversity, it is the recombinational product of V, G, D and C gene. 
generation of a functional immunoglobulin heavy chain gene requires to separate rearrangement events within the variable region first b and j segment are joined to form b j segment and then the v segment is joined to form v d j segment different v d j segment present in different types of b cell clones as it is a random event of that v d j segment can make any recombination and attributes diversity joining of c gene is forming the last kind of recombinational expression that is v d j and c segment let's focus on the recombinants and its function v d and j recombination which takes place at the junctions between recombination signal sequence and the coding sequence is catalyzed by enzymes collectively called as v d j recombinase identification of the enzyme that catalyzes recombination of v d and j gene segments began in the late 1980s and still ongoing In the year 1990 David Baltimore and his colleagues first reported the identification of two recombination active genes designated as RAG1 and RAG2 whose encoded proteins act synergistically and are required to mediate VDJ joining the rag1 and rag2 proteins and the enzyme terminal deoxynucleotidyl transferase are the only lymphoid specific gene products that have been shown to be involved in v d and j segment and rearrangement i would like to conclude my lecture after discussing a special phenomenon associated with the molecular diversity that is allelic exclusion B cells like all somatic cells are diploid and contain both maternal and paternal chromosomes even though a B cell is diploid it expresses the rearranged heavy chain genes from only one chromosome and the rearranged light chain genes from only one chromosome the process by which this is accomplished is called as allelic exclusion which ensures that functional b cell never contain more than one v d and j gene from heavy chain and one v and j gene from light chain unit thanks a lot for your patience please do subscribe my channel stay tuned for the upcoming videos in different fields of biosciences